Greetings everyone, the Good Sir Knight here, and today we're going to do a quick little vlog on grenade launchers in terms of airsoft, how will they compare to their real life counterparts, and most importantly, are they fun and are they effective? Now, grenade launchers, what we're going to be talking about in particular today is my beloved M203 attached here to my SR16 by VFC and Polar Star the Hell Out. This is a nice little look piece. This uh, in particular is a Matrix speed grenade launcher, the plastic type, not the metal. Benefit being that it's lighter weight, uh, downside being that it's far more brittle. Now, all a grenade launcher really does, airsoft wise, is it pushes a button. Yep, that little button hits the back of the grenade, releases the gas, and everything flies forward and delivers devastation and hate upon those who have the misfortune of being in front of it. Now, that being said, 203 is probably the most popular type. They also make the revolving six round grenade launcher, which means you're not going to be out of rounds for the grenade launcher after your first shot. Downside being that you have no primary from which to dispense your normal single BB hate from. So, there are always going to be pros and cons. Now, the grenade launcher, before we even get into the grenades, it does add a bit of bulk to the gun. It makes the front a bit heavier. But as opposed to having a single barrel from which to shoot your enemies with high precision, you now have a close quarters spread super shotgun to devastate entire rooms. Now, we cover some of the more fun parts. One of the other cool things is it does make your weapon look pretty freaking badass. In a variety of ways, you can also put fun little stickers on it. You can inform people of how it is used. And there's all manner of fun to be had. Now, is a grenade launcher fun? Absolutely. It's scary as hell to the oppo opposing team, even though a load of extra BBs aren't going to hurt a ton. The mental image of getting blasted and utterly bombarded with a ton of BBs does dissuade quite a few players from wanting to engage with you in close quarters combat. It has defensive and offensive capabilities. If you're in the defensive, you can load up a grenade shell. And if you know the enemy's gonna be coming around the corner at any time, you are now ready. When they go around, you don't need a well-aimed shot to take them down. You can now just pop off a burst. Now it is gonna, some of the downsides, the extra weight of the, the grenade launcher, not to mention the shells, is gonna slow down your aim a bit. You're not gonna be super high speed aimy, but you can do little quirks to work around that. You have to be smarter with better play shots. And you're gonna have a huge mobility hit, honestly. For some people, the grenade launcher is simply too heavy. It puts too much extra weight on the front of the gun. It takes away from their overall accuracy. And, well, it's just too much weight. So a lot of people want to get a grenade launcher because, like I said, it looks badass as hell. But with the extra weight really adding to the front end of the gun, it wears out their arms. There are a few tricks to this. You can grip really close and get your elbow in there, lock the elbow close to the body. That'll help with the weight. And reaching forward in the Costa grip doesn't take nearly as much stamina as it would seem. It transfers a lot of the weight into the back of the shoulder and everything. And it works out pretty well. Not to mention a sling is a godsend whenever having to deal with anything that has more realistic weights to it. So, grenade launcher. As for the offensive, your ability to just kind of shower grenades as opposed to aiming. Okay, so, let me basically explain this one. If you're on the move, and you're trying to aim and your gun, your muzzle's gonna be moving quite a deal. It's gonna be hard to get those precision shots you need. Which means that someone who's in cover is gonna have a lot easier of a time putting rounds on you than you're gonna have putting rounds on them. So you want to discourage them. Your general form of discouragement is suppressing fire from friendly. You can put your own suppressing fire in inaccurately with the rifle. And if they do poke their head out, your now greatest counter and savior is the oh shit button located down here in front of your magazine. Because when you pull the oh shit button, even if you're generally inaccurate with the primary, the grenade launcher down here is going to put out such a, well, a loud noise and a ton of BBs, which will either cause them to duck back behind cover so you can continue your assault, or it's going to hit them and get them out and, well, solve your problem having to flank it to begin with. And if you do manage to get up to them while you're still running, maybe they're waiting for you to actually pop and wait for them to run out of cover, at which point you can now pop off your grenade and you will hit them with more or less guaranteed precision. Precision being a term they use loosely. So, that covers the grenade launcher itself. The six round grenade launcher will get a lot more shots off for clearing buildings. BB's bouncing, for a lot of fields, ricochets don't count. And if you're unsure, that counts as a hit. So if you're popping 
massive tons of BBs around corners and everything, a lot of people are just going to call the hit. Other people, even if it's unloaded, mind you, simply seeing the grenade launcher knowing that they're in the blast radius at close quarters are just going to surrender, practically. It has its intimidation factor, despite being the fact that it doesn't really hurt that much. And getting showered with BBs is, well, I guess, more embarrassing than anything else, so. Now, as for the grenades themselves, everyone knows the basic shower types. They take forever to load, and they kind of suck. We have our multi-purpose grenades here. There are 12 of them, and they are pricey, pricey little beast. But we have them on our tactical tailor belt. We can load them up like so. Flip it on here. I'm going to step back so you can get a better view. So we've got our long boys up at the front and our shorter boys at the bottom. These are relatively heavy. Sitting up the waistline, they're not a big issue because they're not going to fly around and cause a bunch of problems. However, they are still on the waistline, which means that carrying extra M4 mags outside of the cargo pockets of cry precision trousers is basically going to be a no-go. You're going to have all your grenades. You're generally not going to be able to carry a handgun. Now, handguns are great in the really close quarters, sort of backup weapon to your primary going down, but handguns are also not as much weight as a full set of grenades, but they're, they're generally underpowered. They're okay. A lot of people love them. I've tried over and over with all manner of even the smallest of handguns, and it just doesn't work out. So instead I opted to polished upgrade to keep the primary running, especially while using grenades. So overkill and firepower. Now the grenades here, they do sit pretty well, especially in a belt. It's probably the best way to carry them because you can carry A, more than you'll ever need. And if you set them right, you can still keep your dump pouch, albeit in an inopportune place. The dump pouch on the back pocket, you can still pick things up and put them in there, but you're using your trigger finger, leaving yourself vulnerable, so you have to make sure you're absolutely safe prior to. So, the grenades, they do have a bit of weight to them, nothing too crazy. It's mysteriously a lot heavier when they're sitting in the grenade launcher. And they're a pain to pick up, and they require a fair deal of maintenance to keep running and functional, so you got to take care of your grenades. There's a lot of maintenance, but this one holds 100 BBs. Depending on the field rules you're playing by, your grenade launcher could just be a glorified shotgun, which not necessarily a bad thing. Or you can actually launch projectiles. And these projectiles, by the field rules, will have like a 5, 10 meter kill radius, which means that you'll be able to solve a lot of your problems at range, especially if a bunch of people are just in a bunker and they're camping. You can solve your camper problem. If they're using riot shields, and the field rules apply to it, then just tagging their, their shield with a grenade, and they're out. Problem solved. So this is one of the nice things for Japan, though. Japan doesn't have a lot of grenades. Hell, you're not even going to be able to find these type of grenades for the most part on the internet. So buying them through Evike or something is probably going to be your best approach. They do work out pretty well if you keep them clean and maintained, and they're not going to have any issues. So. Our grenade launcher is effective, well, mostly in the horror aspect, so to speak. They'll keep people from wanting to get close to you, they'll cause people to surrender a lot more. And they do have a really big boom and a spread that, as I mentioned, defensively can take out a bunch of people with low without having to aim in a bunch. And offensively, it can cover your uh, natural shake and movement from just being on the move. And especially if you flank more than one person, you don't have to put in a bunch of accurate shots. You can just grenade blam everyone. And anyone who happens to survive can then get follow-up tapped. So, problem solver. Very effective problem solver. So, ton of grenades. More than you'll ever need inside of a very, very long skirmish. And with these grenades, too, if you have little foam balls or rockets, you can also launch those. You can launch little foam rockets. So, if they don't count as explosives, you can still launch them as distraction devices. Or as the, uh, the Japanese Iron Tiger team that I was part of for quite the longest time, which dissolved and became another little entity, we would find little, basically foam things, and things would get designed as dildos to be projectiled through the air for many kicks and giggles and a ton of distractions, because they land, they don't do anything, but they're like, what? Why mind flood the opponent easier to flank? So, that's more or less my little thing on grenade launchers. They're a ton of fun. You don't see them nearly as often as you should, and the people who buy them, who don't build up those mean biceps and shoulders, generally consider them way too heavy to be functional, whereas I absolutely love them to death. 
And I have, well, I've got 12 grenades and like six backup mags, so you tell me which I'm going to be using more. <laughs> Fantastic, fun to shoot people with, and people generally don't want to get close to you after you've done it a few times. And when you start rushing them, you can mind flood them, which makes them fun. However, as I've mentioned before, they are prohibitively expensive. Getting this grenade launcher on sale, yeah, 50 bucks, it's a decent chunk of change. The grenades, this, all these grenades, and the grenade belt. You know, these little show off thing again. Yeah, now you're looking about tenfold the price of the grenade launcher, which means half a grand in grenades alone that you won't be using as often as you want to, but when you use them, oh yeah, that is, um, that is good footage. That is good footage right there. That is the, uh, the YouTube's thumbs up. So yeah, that's more or less my thoughts on grenade la grenades and grenade launchers. Well, particularly 40 millimeter variants. They're a ton of fun. They're effective. You can launch rockets out of this if you really want to. And they have the tag rounds. And tag rounds, well, when I said this is prohibitively expensive, and you get into tag rounds, you're talking a whole nother beast. Oh, yes. Oh, as much as I'd love to buy tag rounds. Again, $500 even spend over time is still a good chunk of change. So, prohibitively expensive, a blast to use. Uh, very seldom able to use, but completely devastating and totally worth it when you get to, so. Just some of my thoughts, a few things I've been reading, bouncing back and forth between. I'd prefer the grenade launcher to a sidearm any day, and the lack of mobility doesn't bother me terribly. If I do have a, a game where I'm just exhausted, or I'm tired and I don't feel like lugging around grenades and grenade launcher, hey, guess what? Clip here, belt's free which frees up all of my mobility, and then grenade launcher is just two quick screws away from disassembly, put another uh, rail cover on the bottom, boom, excellent little assault rifle. And we haven't even covered magazine speed reloads, which you can do just fine anyway with even basic pouches. So, plenty of options, tons of fun. You can probably get used shells, but there's going to be a lot of O-ring replacements and maintenance that goes into there, so do at your own discretion. So that's all I have for you guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully in the near future we'll have lots more grenade devastations to upload into the actual airsoft section. Because as much as I like standing here and chatting day in and day out, I would rather be out in the field doing things. Airsoft. Pew pew. Yay. So cheers everyone. Stay chivalrous and uh, stay hydrated. It's getting hot out there. Cheers.